תורה מ"ד. מי כותב מוהר"ן? My students here in Eretz Israel told me I need to smile more to the camera. אוקיי, בעזרת השם. וזהו פירוש, והיית עטרת תפארת ביד השם. That a person is going to be the beauty and the glory in the hand of השם. פירוש, על ידי יד השם, by the hands of השם, על ידי מחאת כף, by clapping the hands, שנתעורר ידיו של הקדוש ברוך הוא כנ"ל. You wake up the hands of the creator himself. על ידי זה נתקן ערעורי עכו"ם. And by that you're fixing all of the thoughts of the nations, bad thoughts on Am Yisrael. Look how much power you have. When you stand in your tefillah and you clap your hands, you have the ability to move the hands of the Creator Himself. And when the Creator Himself is going to clap His hands because of your actions, corresponding to your effort in tefillah, like that you mefarnes HaKadosh Baruch Hu with your prayers and you give Him power, and we give power to our God. You give Him power, you're cheering Him up, you give Him strength, and, and, and you're cheering Him up. You tell Him, hey, we're going to make it, we're going to do it, we need to make Hashem happy. You see? You see how nice it is when you start with a smile? Immediately <laughs> Hashem is smiling to you also. You just need to smile, you make one step into the Kedusha, and that's it, and suddenly you're wrapped with Kedusha. You find yourself that you're the beauty and you're the glory of Hashem Barak and Hashem is praising you and say, that's my child and he's doing so many good things for me and I love him and, I pre and I'm proud of him. But when you go with your face down and you're all broken and sad and depressed, so Kodesh Baruch is saying, yeah, my children, they're in their exile. Because the kingship of heaven is, 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 is going after the kingship of earth. It means that the Kodesh Baruch He is handcuffed, he's tied to us. Tzadik Moshe Lirat Elokim, who controls me, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is asking, the righteous man. If you are now in sadness and depression and narrow-minded, HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot help you. Because he's Yahiv Chochma Lecha Kimin, he gives the wisdom to the wise. He wants to help you when you want to help yourself, when you don't want to help yourself, he cannot help you. You can see that when you educate your children, Try to talk to someone, you tell him, hey, look, you need to do this, you need... Person is sad and depressed. How long are you going to be able to help him? How many conversations? How much time are you going to... You cannot talk forever. You cannot. You cannot. You're going to open your white wings and you're going to fly away. <laughs> you're going to move on in your life. You cannot. Because, okay, he's in sadness and depression. How... How can I, okay, I'll give him another hour, another two hours, another... Not everyone are crazy like me. Not everyone is going to sit forever and going to talk to the walls until they're going to start crying. No, no, not everyone are like that. I was standing a few years ago in a very, very hard situation in my Shalom Bait. Telling you, opening all of the cards. And I was about to give up. My wife, she was arguing with me all of the time. She was in horrible stress. And she, she was lost. It's not true she was bad. She was just broken. She didn't want to continue. She didn't want to serve Hashem. She was sad. She was broken, broken, broken. And I was... As a result of that, I lost my, my, my happiness also. And I, all day long, you're fighting and you're arguing and, 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 and you lose your joy and your satisfaction from the Avodat Hashem. And every prayer is a burden and everything, every mitzvah that you want to keep, it's okay, you go. And it's going to cause more fights and more arguments. And, and we were in a bad situation, very bad situation. And I was about to give up. I felt like, what am I going to do? But I'm not that type of person to give up. I don't know what despair means even. When Rabbeinu said, En Yehush Ba'alam Klal, for sure that, that I was in that, in his thoughts when he said that, because I just never gives up, no matter what. It's not exist for me at all to give up on no one. 
And then I realized to myself that how can it be that I'm going to give up on my wife? Okay, so in that situation I was suffering the most. It, it's, it doesn't make it the reason to give up. Adrava, that's your biggest channel, challenge. So that's going to be the place that if you're going to invest the most, you're going to achieve the most. And I can already see the results of that because life is always tests from the Creator of trust, of loyalty. The highest praise of them all that Moshe received from Moshe Midbarach is Eved Ne'eman Karatalo, like we're saying in Shabbat. He's a loyal slave. And, and how you check your, the loyalty of the person? You test him. You test him. That's how you... Vodek She'en You check him that he's not a thief, that he's not a liar. You need to test him. Okay? So, to test other people, it's very easy. Always to check. No, you're lying. No, you're avoiding, you're taking, you're removing, taking off responsibility. No, you're lazy. No, you're just saying it. You're just saying it to please me. No, it's very easy to crucify people. It's, it's the easiest thing. You know, we just need to, a kitchen knife, like those terrorists. They're taking a knife from the kitchen and you go stab people. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's not a big deal. The big deal is to crucify yourself, to test yourself, that you're not a liar. If you give up on that person, you give up on that person. If you say, no, 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 she's too crazy for me, the situation is too crazy for me, she's too sad for me, she's too, too depressed for me, so you give up on a Jew. You give up on a person. And then you can never go and say to Hashem Barach anymore, and if you will, it's going to be a lie. No, Hashem, help all of Am Israel, Hashivenu b'tshuva, help us to do tshuva. You give up on him. So you want that Hashem will not going to give up on you or on your children? Why? You think that your blood is redder than his blood? You think that you are more important than him? Why? Because you're criticizing him. Maybe he grew up in a place that that black place brought him to be who that is. My wife can complain on me on millions of things and she's going to be right on every one of them. Not because that I want to say that or because that I am saying it. Because it's true. Because if she's telling me you're not helping me, she's saying it because that I wasn't helping her. If she's saying it's, uh, I, I think about those things and you're not thinking about it with me, I cannot argue on the fact that really I wasn't thinking about it. And now if I'm going to try to think about it with her, it's not going to make her happy. That's reality. So what? To lie? To fake it till I make it? I cannot. It's never going to happen. The truth is that I need to want to help her. And if I really will want to help her, so one day I'm going to open my mind in a way that, that I'm going to think about it with her and that I'm going to be there with her and that I'm going to care about the thing that she cares about. It's, it has to come from inside. No act and game that I'm going to act is going to make, bring the right results. Adraba, even worse, she's going to feel that I'm acting and that I'm doing it only to please her and that she's not going to be angry or whatever. So it's a lie. So it can be worse. Why? Because you're not doing tshuva. In the moment that you're really going to do tshuva, she won't have that anger anymore. Because she is not exist. She's just a test for Hashem Barach to test how strong you are in your will and dedication for the truth. How much you want to do tshuva. And Hashem is testing you with your wife. Do you want to do tshuva or not? The answer is no. Okay, but do you now, after being rebuked, want to do tshuva or not? 50-50. 80-20, 70 30 Going somewhere, working on ourselves, Baruch Hashem. The main test is to work on yourself. How are you going to work on yourself? You need to want to work on yourself. You have to want to want to want. You need to want, to want, to want, to want. On that you need to put your effort, on your will. To see how I'm never going to give up on no Jew. How I'm never going to give up from, on those situations. And when I came to that understanding, I said, Hey, you're about to give up on your wife. I realized you're going to be such a, a liar. It's going to be such a lie. Because... Because of the difficulty, because of the sadness, because of your laziness and your, your lack of will for the truth, you're about to give up. So you're a liar. So you are lazy. So you don't care about her. So she's right.
And there are people that also in that moment going to say, yes, and I don't have the power to deal with it. Okay? But I'm not like that. And you're stuck with me. <laughs> that's it. And that's the will of Hashem. And here we're coming to the main point. Because we all need to have hope. Because if we're just going to put all of our effort in our Avodat Hashem without hope, without seeing that Hashem Yitbarach is with us, so it's not going to work. Like that I explained to you a few times, that first of all it's written, Avat Olam Avtanu, that Hashem, He loves us, an eternal love. First of all, we're mentioning that in the Brachot before of Kriyat Shema. And then we're saying Kriyat Shema, Ve'avta et Hashem Elokecha, we should love Hashem. Because if you don't know that He loves you, you cannot love Him. We cannot work on an empty stomach. We have to eat something. We need to know that we have hope. Okay, Hashem is with us. Oh, Hashem, He loves me. Okay, Hashem, He cares about me. Okay, Hashem, one day they're going to be a redemption in Geula. Okay, now I can work. If I don't have that promise of Mashiach one day, Bet HaMikdash one day, peace will come, health will be, I'm not functioning. The sadness, the, the no hope. This is why Rabbeinu came and shouted that huge screaming, no despair in the world at all. And Yehush Ba'olam Klan. Because if you have despair, there's no way to, to succeed. So, now we need to understand that Hashem Yitbarach Himself, He wants us to help Him to go out from His crisis, from His situation. He needs us to wake up, and by that awakeness, we're going to wake him up. We're going to do tshuva, how we're saying to Hashem, Hashem, we're not able to do anything, please help us to do tshuva. Hashem is saying, no, no, no. If you're going to do tshuva, I'm going to come back to you. So Hashem wants us to wake up. And when we're going to wake up, He's going to wake up to, to wake us up more, even more. But everyone, and that's also a rule for Shlom Bayit, everyone, when he wants to work on Shlom Bayit, he needs to take full responsibility on himself. If you still stand in a situation that you expect from her also to do something for the Shlom Bayit, forget it. You will never going to have Shlom Bayit. Maybe she's fire. Maybe you're not going to fight today. Aval, but, 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 but it's not peace. It's not Shlom Bayit. Shlom Bayit is that you take full responsibility on yourself, completely. That you don't care if you're going to do good and they're going to curse you. You're going to do good and they're going to disrespect it. And they will not going to appreciate it. They're going to insult you. You're not doing it for no kind of reward. You just do what that you meant to do, what that Hashem wants you to do, what that you believe that is right. And that's your goal and that's your mission. And from that you're going to be happy also. You're going to be happy to work and to invest and to give and to support and to love and to care even if you don't receive anything back except of insultings and rebukes and more things to do. And you need to understand that Hashem loves you. This is why He rebukes you. Because out of His love, out of his, the, 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 the fact that He cares about you, and he wants to bring you to the purpose that to, you're going to become to be righteous, that you're going to be strong, that you're going to achieve big things in life and not going to be lazy and sad and depressed. You're going to have everything in this world. You're going to find yourself standing in front of the Creator after 120, empty-handed. Okay, you had a house. I gave you that house. It's not your house. You had a wife and amazing children. Great. I gave them to you. It's not yours. Only the education that you put inside of them, that is yours. Only the guests that you brought into the house and you host them and sang with them and let them feel Shabbat and whatever, that's your part in the house. Only the effort, the sweat, the tears, that's, on that you're going to be rewarded. Not on the money that you had in the bank. On how that you woke up early to go and, and, and find the money. On how you were working and you were digni dig dignified. dignified and honest and never lied and had faith and gave your charity. And your, in the effort, like Benu is saying, defining Avodat Tzedakah, the work of Tzedakah is where it hurts. If now you have five shekels, 10 shekels, 20 shekels, 50 shekels in your wallet, 
bills and coins, someone asks for charity, you open your wallet, you have a huge test giving that 50 bill. Okay, you, you're not able actually to do that and you're not planning to also. And the 20, only if it's a huge crisis you're going to take that 20 out of your wallet. The 10, you might, maybe, and the 5, okay, you know, I can give the 5. In that situation, if you're going to give the 5, it counts as charity. No one said that it's not charity. But it's not avodat tzedakah. It's not the effort, the work of charity. The work of charity starts well that it hurts. In the ten, in the bills, not in the coins. When you go into the bigger numbers, then kefum tzara agra. According to the effort, that's how you're going to be rewarded. As much as you're going to suffer more and going to give more and going to take that out of your flesh, from your bones, from your blood, and give those bloods to someone else, that's how much you're going to be rewarded on that mitzvah tzedakah. So if now you honor your wife and she's honoring you back, it's obvious that you're going to keep on honoring her, but you're not going to be rewarded on that. But you're going to be rewarded if you're going to honor her and she's going to disrespect you and you're going to tell good words to her and she will never going to tell you I love you and you're going to be nice to your children and they're going to disrespect you. That's where you're going to be rewarded. We're not saying that we're hoping for that, but when it's happening, you need to understand that it's coming out of the kindness of Hashem. It's coming because Hashem Itbach wants you to develop and to grow and to achieve high levels. And we're not allowed to give up on any Jew, on any person in the world. I see the comments of, 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 of my students in the Facebook and in the YouTube and, and emails that they're sending us. You see enormous people, you see giants, you see holy people, you see amazing people, amazing human beings with, with huge will, with a holy will, with a holy desire to bring Hashem into their lives. And I'm talking about Jewish, and I'm talking about converts, and I'm talking about people from the nations that there was no chance in the world that they're going to wake up. And how did they woke up? Because Hashem woke them up. You cannot wake up by yourself. Only when you're standing in tests between people and Hashem likes you, so Hashem Itbarach is shining, bringing His light to shine on you. And then you wake up and suddenly you say, Hey, what's going on? I met a person. Not a Jew. And he's telling me, how much we have to learn from you. We don't have your wisdom between us. We're on the planet the same time as you, and we haven't achieved what that you achieved. The wisdom that you have is something that people, uh, the wisest people in our country will never gonna achieve. We have to learn from you. We want you to guide us, we want you to lead us, we want us, you to, to teach us and to, to, to explain to us how we can also be close to, to the Creator, to find Hashem. How a person wake up from, from all of his environment, from all of his community, all of his company, all of his life, all of the, 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 the dreamland, dream world that he lives in, suddenly to want to connect himself to Am Yisrael? Where, is it, where did it come from? You can never put the point on it except of to know that Hashem it Barach with his um, eyes, with his uh, sharp eyesight, recognized that person and chose him and revealed himself to him in private supervision and with amazing combinations and things that he moved things and, and brought that person to meet some Jewish people in his business tra travels and, and, and meeting people and talking to people and suddenly to find to put your hand on a certain book or whatever like that priest Philip that found a, a, a booklet of Rav Shalom and read that book and all of his life changed because of one tiny book like Pearls of Faith or whatever. And that's it. And it was a life changing for him. Why? Because he had the merit from heaven. Because Hashem, he could enter to the same store and buy something else and to go out. But Hashem, suddenly that booklet, wow, what's going on? It's, 
so colorful, so shiny, so interesting. What's written inside? It could be recipes of, of Chinese food if, if Hashem would want. But Hashem put that book in front of his eyes with advice that were straight connected to his situation in his point in life with his wife, with his children, and precise to his point. Private, precise private supervision on his life. Why? Because Hashem chose him. So you see people around the world waking up and growing and, and a student of mine is asking, he's not Jew yet, he's in, in a, a, a Giyur convert process and he wants to put filin and he's losing his mind, he wants to put filin mm. and he's got the holy desire. I wish all of Am Israel going to have the desire to put filin like that poor guy. Mm. And he wants to put a filin and he's calling, please, can I put filin? If I have filin, if I'm going to, am I allowed to put it filin? Can I put you see a desire of a crazy person for the tefillin. And you have people that have three pairs of tefillin in their closet and, you know, they, they put it in the closet. <laughs> they put tefillin in that uh, uh, shelf. And uh, so what's going on here? Need to understand. Need to understand that it's all coming from the heart. The honesty. Of, of, of the people bringing Hashem Barach to reveal himself to them. So the king himself, he is limited and he is hanged on our will. He depends on us, on how much we're going to desire him. And then like Tana de Biliao, the, the book of Eliyahu and Avi is saying, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or, or, or not a Jew, if you're a man or a woman, even if you're a slave or a free person, corresponding to your actions, to your effort, that's how much the Spirit of Hashem, the Divine Spirit, going to hover on you, going to wrap you, going to fill you from inside, going to give you the wisdom. A person can wake up suddenly, it all converted. And then the Zohar Kadosh is saying, in that moment, the honor of Hashem Barach was so great, and, 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 and fame and name of Hashem Barach was going out in the world, and everyone knew him, and everyone heard, and everyone were talking, and it was huge distribution of light of Hashem. Why? Because Yitro converted. Yitro, who are you? You're worshipping all kinds of idols. He was a horrible person before, but he was a man of truth. He was very far from Gdusha, completely far from Gdusha. He was doing everything that was wrong. But he was seeking for the truth. And that search for the truth brought Hashem in Barach to reveal himself to him. And he became to be the father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu. His daughter is the mother of the children of Moshe Rabbeinu. The children of Moshe Rabbeinu are his grandchildren. Can you explain that? Can you understand that the person that was worshipping all idols that were exist in that generation, he tried everything. Even I haven't tried everything. <laughs> so we need to understand that the will of the Creator is positive, is good. But even He, that He is the Almighty with all of the powers, He is limited. Why? Because He is so connected to us that he cannot move away from us. That he cannot decide, just we need to choose, we need to decide. And he cannot reveal himself until we're going to ask him to. Because it's going to be too much, he's going to blind us, so he's going to lose our power to come closer to him. He's so great and so beautiful that no one can see that. But if we're going to want to see him, it's written that no one can see Hashem, but on Moshe Rabbeinu it's written that Moshe Rabbeinu was talking to Hashem face to face. You cannot stand in front of Hashem and Moshe is standing in front of Hashem. You cannot talk to me and to stay alive and Moshe is talking to him and whenever Moshe is calling him, Hashem is coming. What's going on here? Yeah, because when you nullify yourself completely to Hashem in Barach and you don't have no selfish being, no physicality, so Hashem is with you completely. Just it depends on how much you're ready to sacrifice, how much you're ready to search for the truth. And to stand and to, to confront your fears and your anxieties and your lackings. 
If we give up on any kind of Jew, we, we lost our guarantee that Hashem will not going to give up on us. If you give up on that person, you lost your guarantee that Hashem will not going to give up on you. You made the reality happen. If you're going to choose always to go and to put another effort, no matter how much it's going to cost you, no matter how much it... So then you have a guarantee. Hashem will be there for you forever. So, Baruch Hashem. Thank you very much. Chazak Baruch.